I try to be like the old people in my community. No matter how many abuses that people told me they had experienced, there was always something very alive and beautiful in them that I remember. Arriving at the place I am today is the right place for me. That I struggled for a majority of my life with gender dysphoria and the only right thing to do was to transition. I work at Microsoft um, in the Microsoft Business Division. So when a new version of Office comes out, I'm one of the people who actually makes this stuff work. I'm an anthropologist. Um, I teach um, undergraduate and graduate university courses. It was important to me to finally be recognized for who I am and I think that uh, my relationships are more meaningful now. They've learned to respect me as the man that I am. Yes. A person obviously being comfortable within themselves and not having to fight within themselves uh, can actually be a lot better member of society and contribute a lot more. Now I am a firefighter EMT on the Danvers Fire Department. This may will mark my 12th year. My gender identity is not a limitation and it's added to my experience, my life experience, and in many ways it's made me a more compassionate person. So when I graduated, I took work in human and social services. When I first started working, I wasn't actually out as trans. Mostly I was worried that um, I would have negative repercussions from my supervisors. If they had fired me, they would essentially have been getting rid of one of their good counselors, which is very hard to, to fill those positions. In general, I think people want to do the right thing. I think people want to have compassion. But I think we need to have laws when that kind of good judgment breaks down. We know that people not just feel vulnerable, but they are vulnerable and there's not clear and explicit language that lets everyone know that transgender people are covered by the laws. And so one of the importance of passing non-discrimination laws is to send a strong message about the dignity and the safety of transgender people's lives. the big issues is that transgender people are widely unemployed and vastly underemployed. And what I'm always left thinking about is the fact that there's a loss. There's a loss for the person who faced discrimination, but there's also a loss to that workplace. When I would get calls, I would speak to the recruiters and I would say, it's very important that you understand that I plan on coming to this company as a woman and I'll interview that way, even though all of my prior experience as a man. It was only one company that went beyond that first recruiter call. I was brought into Microsoft on an acquisition from Groove Networks. I checked their diversity policy and um, it was right there that gender identity and gender expression were um, explicitly named. I have um, three patent cubes sitting on my desk right now that I'm really proud of, and I don't think any of those patents would have been issued if I lost my job. You know, that's my own invention. And I think every morning when I go into work, I'm particularly proud that kind of I made the journey, the company supported me, and I'm repaying that. You want to perform when your company tells you that you're important to them. My captain is uh, extremely supportive. He says, you were my friend before, you're still my friend now. He said, just don't mind me though, if the first time I see you, you know, dressed as a woman in a store, I sit there and go, ah! And I turn around and I said, well, don't, be surprised if the first time I see you seeing me, I go, ah! <laughs> so we both had a good laugh over that. The minute you step onto the fire ground, the minute you go on the job, 
all personal stuff gets left behind and you start working as a unit and as a team and that's what counts. We got the call that it was early in the morning and uh, no sooner the alarm came and when the explosion happened, I mean it knocked paintings off the wall, pictures off the wall at the station, everything else. When we, as soon as we pulled out onto the ramp, we looked up, we could see the big mushroom cloud of flame and smoke. I mean, the houses were totally blown apart, debris everywhere. Um, and you just fall back on your training and do what you need to do. But I was able to prove to myself, I said, like, yeah, I could still do the job. That, you know, even though I'm a trans woman, that it's, that's not the issue here. Every time you have to face any sort of bureaucratic or paperwork, anything, you have to sit back and wonder, is it worth my time to even do that? For something maybe even as simple as going to the doctor. About 15 years ago, I was told by doctors that I should have my knees replaced. And uh, I haven't done it yet. Even if my doctor is accepting and uh, uh, non-transphobic, uh, um, I don't know who I may run into in the hospital who's, who is transphobic. Could be a nurse, could be a janitor, you know, it could be anybody who could cause me harm in a, in a moment when I'm the most physically vulnerable. The idea that you could be damaged more uh, on the operating table is something that I have to think about. When an individual is targeted for violence because of their identity, that targets not just that individual, but an entire community. To have a transgender person who's violently attacked sends a message to the rest of the community that you are not safe. You know, the stress that I experience when I go out on a date with my lady, uh, you know, in a public place, it might go fine and it might not. So you just got to know that, yeah. When you've heard rumors about people being beaten, um, when you've heard rumors about people being in car accidents and being denied medical help just because someone's trans, it's frightening. It's, it's kind of hard to believe that we can treat each other this way. We're not wrong. Everyone matters. All of us matter. And all of us have different experiences to, to bring to society, to community. And that's what makes the world a richer place to be in. I have a nine-year-old daughter, almost nine and a half. God, she's getting big. She said to me one night, um, driving home, when I was taking her home, she said, you know, Dana, you're the one who taught me how to sing. And she just said, well, you've just been so brave. And whenever I get embarrassed, I just think about everything you've gone through. And singing is easy. And I just went, wow. Now, if that's not having a good impact on your children, then I don't know what is. One of the high points in my life <clears throat> was when my father died and on his deathbed, uh, after years of struggling with my gender identity, he said, Enoch, you are a good man. And so that's when I knew that I was okay. What I think is behind a lot of the resistance is um, some vague sense of discomfort. And it's discomfort about the unknown. What I do know is that it hurts my heart to see so many trans people get a job and somebody finds out that they're trans and then they, uh, they eradicate them because they can give the job to somebody who doesn't disturb them. There's no place in the law for me to point to and, know, and personally know that I'm protected from discrimination. We're always worried of what's going to happen to us, whereas if we had that explicit protection, I think a lot of us would feel included we can do it. We can get statewide non-discrimination laws passed. We can get a federal bill passed. Um, and we're all strengthened by having gone through that journey to get to the ultimate place where there's comprehensive protections. Mm -hmm.